What's up, peoples? All right, so I've been getting a whole lot of messages talking about I need to start talking about the guns that I have. Things I've done to them, parts, all that good stuff. Okay, let's do it. All right, so what do we have here? I don't know. It looks like a bag of some sort. Oh, wait a minute. There's some zippers and, and things and, 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 and stuff is going on. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? Anybody know how to make the transformer sound? <laughs> oh, would you look at that? Would you look at that? What, what is this? It's like, it's like, it's like Santa Claus finally came to the ghetto. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Well, not to like the ghetto ghetto because that would be mad illegal. Especially in California or Chicago. Oh, okay. So, what is this? Well, this is my pieced together Spikes Tactical AR-15 pistol. Yeah, pretty sweet, isn't it? Okay. Well, let me go ahead and point this out right off the bat. I know the upper and the lower are kind of off color. I really don't care. I'm not one of those guys that likes to... uh keep everything matching as long as it's relatively in the same area I'll roll with it plus I'm colorblind I don't see variations in color that often so let me go ahead and talk about this bad boy right here we're going from the inside out as I said before spikes tactical upper and lower we're gonna go with the upper first as you can see Standard upper, but you flip it on this side. It's like, oh my God, where'd all that stuff go? There's no forward assist. There's no brass deflector. There's no, no, no ejection port cover. Where, where, where'd it go? This is what you call the Spikes Tactical slick sided upper. I like the slick sided upper because one, it saves on weight, and two, I don't have to worry about all that stuff on this side here that snags. Plus, I've never used a forward assist in my life. All right, so we're just gonna roll with that one. You know, but people say, well, without the brass deflector. You know, your brass might fly out and hit somebody. Well, my face is going to be on this side of the weapon. The brass is going to be flying out that side of the weapon. If you're on this side of me and you're getting hit in the face with brass, chances are you either need to duck or get up and shoot at the objective with me. Period. Got no time for, uh, for laziness. So, the lower, Spike's Tactical jack lower as you can see with the calico jack insignia that he had on his actual pirate flag a lot of people don't realize calico jack is a real guy i like how it says parlay plunder and r yeah now for those of you guys who don't know i have a huge fascination when it comes to pirates i am a pirate fanatic uh, most people want to go to the Bahamas for the sun, the sand, the beaches, and the booze and stuff. I want to go to the Bahamas just to say I walked on the same lands as Charles Vane, Calico Jack, and Captain Morgan. Yes, Captain Morgan was a real pirate before he became a bottle of rum. He's turning in his grave right now. You rat bastards. Now, continuing on. Well, no, you know, no, I'm going to talk about the lower parts kit. It's a standard GI lower parts kit. All right, there's nothing, nothing special about it. It's standard seven to eight pound trigger. You know, nothing, no ambidextrous selector switch, or any of that nonsense. It's just a standard lower parts kit. The only thing that's not standard in the lower part kit, lower parts kit is a pistol grip. This is a normal pistol grip. Okay, this pistol grip has this little finger indentation thing here. I find that to be pretty uncomfortable. And one of my rules of thumb is, if things are uncomfortable, you're not gonna wanna touch them, you're not gonna wanna mess with them. So what I did was I replaced it with a Mission, mission First Tactical pistol grip. Now it does have the finger grooves on it, but they're not as pronounced as the standard pistol grip, but it does give me that good frame of reference when it comes time for me to start grabbing onto this thing. Another thing it has is a little compartment right here. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, they put batteries and stuff in there. For the purpose of this weapon, I do not see myself having to change out the batteries on the go. All right. This is supposed to be my three day to a week weapon, meaning anywhere between one to three to five days to seven days. If I'm not back at home, uh, start folding my flag now because something's wrong. All right. But what I do keep in there is hearing protection. 
Because if you know anything about AR-15 pistols, you know these bad boys could get pretty loud. So I carry hearing protection with me. You never know when you're going to be shooting in enclosed spaces. Okay? So now we're going to continue on to the back. What is this contraption right here? Well, this is the Law Tactical Folding Stock Adapter. You press this button right there and your stock folds over to the side. What that does is it provides a lot of mobility, you know, added mobility for the AR-15 platform. All right. This is a pistol. So it has inherently more mobility than an AR-15 rifle or carbine. But with the folded stock, it adds mobility. I can put this into a toolbox now. You saw it in my bag. OK, so that, that pretty much goes without show. So what is this thing here? This looks like a stock. Do I have a short bow rifle tax stamp? No, I don't. This is actually classified by the ATF as a pistol arm brace. All right. Technically, you put this on, you're supposed to be firing with one hand like that and it rests up against your arm, your arm like that. All right. It's an arm brace. Now, arm braces come in different variations. There are some that slide and they wrap around your forearm like so, um, you know, predominantly made by uh, SB Tactical. This arm brace is made by KAK Industries. I like it because it's a little lighter than the SB Tactical one. And it just looks cooler in my opinion. All right. Now, go ahead and put this out. There is talk that the ATF has approved this to be shouldered. They've already approved the SB Tactical arm brace, arm stabilizer, whatever you want to call it. They already approved that to be shouldered. According to KAK Industries, the company that makes this, they say that this is now approved to be shouldered. I've yet to see any paperwork on that. Maybe I'm just running late. Maybe you guys have seen the paperwork. I don't know, but I haven't. So I'm not going to shoulder this until I see that paperwork. I don't want to listen to a company say that, yeah, the ATF says we can shoulder this just to keep up with the sales that are coming with SB Tactical. Because once the ATF reapproved them to shoulder their brace, uh, yeah, those things started flying off the shelf. And they're, just, they're probably trying to play keep up. And so they're just saying that the ATF said it. And I don't want you guys getting caught up because the company said that, yeah, well, you know, we can get shoulder too. And then you mess around and, and find yourself in a bad situation with the ATF. So just wait for the paperwork. All right. So we started from here and we're going back around here. We just did U-turn and we're going back. So what's this? This is a standard mil spec GI charger handle. No bells, no whistles. Now we're talking about it. You see them on any AR-15 rifle you buy. Pretty much in the world. Magpul backup sights, front and rear. All right. People ask me how come I didn't get the pro sights. I don't need the pro sights. Pro sights are two hundred dollars. The Magpul Gen twos are fifty bucks. All right. They do the same exact thing, except one's made of metal. What's the point? This is a field sport red dot sight. It's co-witnessed with my front and rear backup sights. So when this one fails, I still have my sights here. But I got a nice red dot sight on there. It's a field sport. It's very cheap. It's reliable. Would I like a SIG Romeo 5? Of course I would like a SIG Romeo 5. Who wouldn't want the Romeo 5? But to be honest with you, I don't have spend the Romeo 5 money right now. So I got this one. It does its job. It serves its purpose. I'm not looking to be all super hardcore out there with, with, with my red dot sight because, to be honest with you, I'm not really going to be using it for, for that nature. You know, they, they froze the SIG Romeo sight. They froze it in a block of ice. I'm not going to the Arctic with, with this weapon. I have other weapons if I need to go to the Arctic and, you know, like fire, okay, or a heater or something like that. So I'm not going to the Arctic. With this weapon this is just to get me from wherever the hell I'm at back to my house so I can reload read out re outfit and get back in the fight all right this is a seven and a half inch free float key mod rail made by NC star NC star is another relatively small named company but they do make good parts for whatever you're trying to do all right some of their parts are hit and miss I'll admit that you know I've had my problems with them as well but 
This is you know, this is just a, a four rail. It's not you know hand guard, free float rail, whatever you want to call it, four in. It's not anything special. All right. If I melt it down, I'll probably be able to send it back in for warranty. But you know, it's a foreign is a foreign. You know, you're not you don't need to spend a whole bunch of money on your foreign. So what's this here? Oh well, this is my light, my tack light. I like this light. It's a 200 lumen light. Sorry, didn't mean to blind you. But more importantly, this light here already has its key mod attachments. You see, right there key mod attachments this is a key mod rail so instead of putting a key mod picatinny rail right here and then putting the light on top of that I could just put the light right into the key mod lock it in and then just tighten it down look at that good to go some of these guys man they make these these weapons they they go real innovative with these weapons and um it makes me wonder what if these guys got into like rocket science or or, or curing world hunger or something like that you know it's with that innovation but I'm glad they're in weapons innovation because that that's cool so the barrel is a stainless steel 8 inch spikes tactical AR-15 pistol barrel I have low profile gas block on there of course alright no bells no whistles Stainless steel barrel holds up well against against the the rain and, and the rust, but it also has a shorter life than some of the more robust barrels. But hey, I'll probably get there at around 30, 40, 50,000 rounds, and by that time I'll probably have another one of these, so I, I wouldn't worry about it. Now on the business end, what is this here? Oh, this is a KAK Industries flash can. A lot of you guys looking at that and you're saying, hey, it kind of reminds me of the Noveski flaming pig the kx3 the kx5 well that's what it is it's pretty much a knockoff of it i call it what it is it's a knockoff of it but performance wise it's not a knockoff it does its job i put 10 30 round magazines through this thing in a matter of i would say minutes and it held up it got hot of course but it held up it didn't it didn't fall it didn't fail it didn't melt or anything it's very light. It's lighter than this thing right here, you know, because it's made of aluminum. So it's it, it's very light, but it also does the job. It keeps the gas and the sound forward away from me. Now, the purpose of this AR-15 pistol, basically, I keep it in a bag, throw it in the truck, throw it in the toolbox, throw it in whatever. You know, it has that mobility. It, it, it's it's something that's very very um mobile for me to carry around now i'm not carrying it in my pistol belt you know i'm not carrying it at my waist or on my ankle or anything i have pistols for that i'm not you know carrying like that but in a situation to where i might need a little bit more firepower this would do the job for me okay when my pistol isn't enough this will do the job for me you know what i'm saying so yeah and this will probably be one that i would go for if um i'm clearing you know somebody breaks into my house and i have to go from room to room in the house or, or I'm stalking around. You know, that's why I got the light. If you're clearing, if you are using any kind of weapon for home defense, I would recommend a light, a laser if you have one, a red dot sight, and I wouldn't recommend one of those super high tech two to three pound triggers. Okay, because you don't want to you don't want to drop anybody by accident. You know, because your your trigger finger got a little happy. And and because two, two pounds isn't a lot, it's not a lot. So you want to keep keep something on there that 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 you know has a little bit of a weight behind it, you know, just in case, just in case. All right. So yeah, it's the AR-15 short barrel. Not a short barrel rifle because it's it's not tax stamp. It's a pistol. And the, the beautiful thing about this is my concealed carry permit covers this. So I can put this in a bag and walk around with it. I, I can put this in, in under the seat, you know, something like that. It, it 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 does its job. It's very mobile. I like that. I like this. So what's the name of this bad boy? Well, easy. I call it Calico Jack. I get to mix my fandoms. I love pirates and I love guns. Plus, 
It already has the Calico Jack insignia on it. So everybody, I want you to meet Calico Jack. Calico Jack, this is everybody. Now I don't want no trouble out of you guys. There's snacks in the back. All right, any questions? Throw them in the comment section below. Send your likes, your dislikes, I really don't care. Doing my thing regardless. See, my pizza's almost here, so I'm gonna go eat. God bless America, support the boys in blue, support the boys in green, long live the republic, and I catch you on the flip side. Peace.